Okay, so now we want to go over the fit tab, which isn't very long. Um, the fit tab has your fit options, your text placement, um, your scaling, and then the fine tuning. So under the fit options, the description here says, if there isn't enough room to place both the text and the arrows inside the extension lines, like in between the two extension lines, the first thing to move outside the extension line is either the text or the arrows, which is the best fit. Move the arrows first, move the text first, move both the text and the arrows, which they don't have any of these that are like, that. that none of these in the examples here fit the criteria. Always keep uh, text between extension lines and suppress the arrows if they don't fit inside the extension lines. So we should be able to edit some of this stuff. I'm gonna put the first option first. Let's go draw a dimension that's too small, like a wall dimension here. So what it does, is it moved the arrows outside the the extension line. It also did not draw a dimension line between, and it moved the text on the outside as well. And the text cannot be placed any closer than this. So the text placement is, and I'm gonna do just, I'm gonna, I wanna do things here through the properties menu, but I'm gonna show you what they correlate to. So real quick, Looking at the fit, these are my fit options, my text placement, and my scaling and fine tuning. Okay. So in the properties menu, when I select this dimension and I go to my fit area, it's actually not very long. We have one option, which is the dim line forced. This is the same option as on the fit tab, always draw between the dimension line. You say on and it forces this dimension line to fit right here. Okay. You've also got your scaling um, dim line inside. Uh, that's that was well, I'll have to show you the option, but um, your scaling, your best fit. So, which one are you going to put? You know, you're going to move outside your text and arrows, your arrows only, your text only. Um, on some, for a lot of these, depending on where your text placement is, it's always the same. So we did best fit, right? Text placement is another factor that, that comes into play here, which is text inside. You can force it to be inside. And then your text movement. You can do keep the dim line with keep the dim line with the text. Move the text and add a leader. So you can see it adds like a little leader up top. Or move or move the text no leader. And these options might become available. No, they still aren't available. We might have to do like a bit of a longer dimension, something like this. And then you can start to see some of those options come to fruition. So here's text and arrows. It moves the arrows uh, outside first or just that. That moves everything outside. Arrows only, text only. So the arrows stay where they're at. Uh, only the arrows get moved out. So you can do like this. Um... There's different options to place your text. I usually will stick this with just best fit and then only really modify this one. Um, you can do something like this and then what happens is once you place it, you can place your text manually. That's what this is meant for. It's meant for you to grab your text and place it manually like if you want to place it closer or maybe you want to force it to be right here. And notice how the tech, how the, the, the arrows get forced outward. You might be able to control that by adjusting uh, well, our best fit is not an option now because we changed uh, the type, the placement type. But little pro tip here, you can select your dimension, hover over this and say flip arrow and it will force the arrow to the inside. You can also do things like continue dimension or do a baseline dimension from here. Grip hovering will give you a lot of interesting options. You can also choose to move it, like change the text placement style like this. You can change it to leader from here uh, where did it go? Uh, move text only or move it with a leader. Um, above the dim line. It's just, just different options. You can go you can run, run through all of those. Okay, so things in the fit tab correlate to that. We did like what things get moved out. I chose best fit. Uh, this is if you want to put it beside with a leader or without a leader. You can put it there. Um, you can choose whether you want it to be annotative or not. Right now I'm not doing any annotation. Um, you can scale dimensions to your layout. So whatever this is, you can have it scaled to a layout. 
or you can scale your dimensions. Now, right now I have dimension scaling turned on. Okay. <clears throat> what I would opt, like if I was just doing this in model space, if I was only dimensioning a model space, I would either do one of two things. One, use annotative or two, set this scale to one and then go and adjust all of the properties in the other tabs, like the text, for example, and change the text to a reasonable size, like four inches instead of three sixteenths of an inch. That might be too big. Maybe something like two inches. And I might go through like my lines and arrows and start modifying things here. Extension beyond dim lines, change that to like one offset from origin, change it to one uh, symbols and arrows, change the arrow size to like 1.5. Uh, see what happens. See, now we're getting there. Now we're making elements larger. Um, by my, you might have to tweak it a bit. Uh, change the break size to one. Maybe change the arrow size to like two. Uh, change my lines over here. That, that all, all that stuff is, is, is relatively good. Uh, text tie it at two. Offset from the text or from the line at like one. And so we're, we're looking decent now for all of these textiles. That's that's one option. Or you can just do the manual scaling. So, all right. Um, that's our that's our fit tab where you can do that manual scaling. So I'm going to uh, leave the manual scaling on. I'm going to undo all these changes because I like to just scale the thing up. There we go. Our scaling is set back to where it was. And uh, the last thing is the fine tuning on the fit tab. And your fine tuning is going to be place your text manually and draw a dim line between dimension lines. Usually you want to have this selected at all times so that way when you go and draw a small dimension, it's always going to have that dim line in between instead of that gap that was showing earlier. You probably don't want to have the option selected where um, you place text manually because if you do, every time you place the dimension, you're going to have to place that text. See, like on either on either side, it's like it like it, we're not just putting it up. It like, and actually, this is more apparent. This is actually way more apparent when you're using uh the other styles like um like this one, dimension line without a leader, or dimension line with the leader, and we do one here. You see how like the text like floats, without that option turned on. Without that option turned on, the text will just be above, locked in place. You place your dimension, and then you can go and modify it after the fact. So I like to, to just have that option turned off and let it stick with the dimension. Uh, another quick pro tip. If you have a dimension, any dimension, but prefer, most like I mean, really the, the, the ones like the, the, with the leader or the free moving text, if you go and move that text from its default position, and go and stretch this with a grip or something, the text will stay where it's at until you hover over it and reset the text position. Once you do that, you go to stretch the grip, it'll move with it. But once you move it away from that default position, uh, it moves independent. Your, your dimension line will move independently from that again until you reset. There you go. All right. And that's it for the fit tab.